Yeah, I'm going to begin just by saying, for those who don't know too much about him, can you, can you tell us a little bit about Bushmaster? Bushmaster is from Jamaica. Um, he's nice with his hands, uh, very combative. Uh, he, he came up in the streets uh, doing petty crimes and stuff like that, um, got better at his, his gig. Um, big, big Fish needed uh, some new waters, came to New York to um, avenge some, some debts that were owed to his family. And uh, then we have season two. Because uh, John McIver, I mean, he's said to be brimming with charisma. I mean, how essential is that to this role? I mean, that, that he's not that just that archetypal kind of villain. He has got that kind of, that, that charm, I suppose, as well to his demeanor. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's, it's important because it, I, I feel like ultimately I want people to relate to him and, and not just relate to him as more than just a villain, to see him as a human being um, who has had some hardships in his life that have led him to choices that are not necessarily popular. You know what I mean? Um, to take it out of this, you know, really uh, black and white view, you know, um, and give him his humanity back. I think that's, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's important. It's really important. Because, I mean, we saw in Black Panther how, how nuanced a villain can be and how sometimes it really blurs the line between good and evil. And that seems to be the case now in, in kind of superhero productions, be it on, on Netflix or on the cinema, that it's get, um, the villains are now arguably sometimes the most complex figures of all. I mean, it must be a real dream for any actor to get involved with, with a, a character of this nature. Yeah, it really is. Um, I mean, I love comic books. I love sci-fi. I love all heightened ability. So, you know. I mean, you know, aside from being a performer, but to be able to step into the world and to portray a character is like, pfft, dreams. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but everyone always says it's so fun playing a villain. But what is it about maybe tapping into that? Is that something about tapping into that certain side of ourselves that, that is quite fun to explore? Is it almost yeah. cathartic, I suppose? Yeah, it is. I mean, cathartic is a great word. Um, yeah, we don't get, that's what it, someone, someone's asking me, like, why do you like being an actor? I mean, the truth is, I get paid to experience the full range of what it means to be human. So like, you can give me money for being angry. You know, there's nowhere in life, where does it happen, where you are encouraged to fully embrace what you feel. And so I think with villains uh, specifically, we don't, it's, there's, there's not a lot of room for the dark, you know, in our, in our culture. And these are all feelings that we have. Like, there's nobody who doesn't have them. It, if, it's just a matter of how well you bottle them up. So the villain, I think, specifically gives us permission to step into territory we don't normally get to, to step into. And that's always delicious to me. But there is obviously a familiar territory in a sense that you're a Harlem native, of course. Yes. That, so, so, I mean, what's it, does that make this whole project even more kind of special to you, more personal to you, because know, you know these streets so well? Absolutely. It's a homecoming, you know? It's a homecoming. Yeah, it's like having, you know, the NBA championships at your high school. Mm. <laughs> it was like, really? It's like, yeah. Because what's it like joining a series after there's already been a season? I guess, th is, does it represent a kind of less risk in the sense that you know the, the tone, you know exactly what they're going for here, you know the scope and the ambition. It must be quite nice kind of coming into that when it's already been established, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting way of putting it. Everyone has sort of talked about it the other way, which is um, being afraid to come into it because you have to step into big shoes. Um, I think that for me, I just treat it all new. You know, you have to, I feel like you have to show up without a lot of preconceived notions. And for me, that works because then it means I'm always doing something fresh and, and not so contrived and, and, you know what I mean, overly thought. So what yeah. do you think it is about the, 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 the Luke Cage franchise, which is just, I don't know, appealed to our kind of imaginations and hearts so well, because it's got such a huge following now, this, yeah. this series. I, I mean, I think it's a combination of things. I mean, great casts, music being involved. Um, it's, it's, it's huge to see an African-American lead, you know, in a superhero show. Um, you know, so there's, there's interest in that. I mean, obviously, you can see how Black Panther done, has done. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of things, of those things. And it yeah. seems to delve into, it, it, obviously, using the kind of superhero genre, the fantasy genre in some ways, to get into quite human themes. I mean, it seems that, given the, your character's Caribbean uh, roots, it means that like people on the street are being stopped just having dreadlocks and stuff. So it's tapping into kind of prejudice and, and very social political themes as well, yeah. this, this, this series. Yeah, I mean, it, it does. I mean, it's a, I feel like the heightened ability is, 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 is synonymous with animation, the same way that The Simpsons can say something that you know, another show cannot. Flat out. I mean, if you gave the script to live, you know, real live action, they couldn't pull it off or be accepted. So I feel like, you know, this universe is a is a cover for a lot of um, issues that that need to be spoken about between so-called good and evil. Yeah, why, why do you think that is? Because I've always thought that. I think sometimes it's actually fantasy movies and science fiction movies that tell us most about ourselves yeah. than kind of dramas. Do you think sometimes we almost need to step out of reality to be able to really best 
perceive it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think you know the answer to that I being human. Like, sometimes you, it's better to allow someone to experience something than to tell them, you know, what it's going to be like. So, yeah. I mean, what, how great is a, a job do you think Netflix are doing at the moment in this industry? Not just promoting kind of this sense of accessibility now where everything's at kind of people's fingertips, but also just kind of encouraging great storytellers and great filmmakers and, and producers to, to really to, to a real platform now to just show off some really kind of groundbreaking, quite progressive stuff at the moment. Yeah, I think it's amazing what Netflix is doing, has done. Well, you know what I mean? Um, creating a platform. Uh, and, and, and it's a... It's a it's an international platform, so I think it's just a place for many voices to converge and to hear each other, you know what I mean? Um, which is, I feel, always enriching and good, you know what I mean? So what else have you got coming up soon? Is it The Pretenders you're doing with the, the James Franco? Um, we shot that we like, shot a that long time ago. Right now, I'm with James Franco, we're, we're doing The Do Season 2. And um, yeah, current in production, fifth episode of Nine right now. Um, just put out a short movie that me and my friend uh, did called Let Them Die Like Lovers. Jesse Atlas directed that. It's on the Dust platform. You should check it out. Mm. Tell all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Could we, um, just to go back, I mean, obviously the pretenders you, you've shot it, but it hasn't been released yet over yeah. here. But what, what, what can you tell us about that? And what's James Franco like as a, as a director? Because we know him so well as an actor, but obviously he's really starting to make a name for himself from behind the lens as well. Yeah. Um, the pretenders, I don't know. I, I couldn't. I don't know what I'm able to tell you about that. But it's it's a cool flick. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes out, you should stay interested in it. James, as a director, is pretty cool. He's super talented. He's, and um, intelligent is all hell. He's like, I mean, people don't really realize just how of much of an erudite he is. He reads like a book a week. Um, so his mind is always going. He's always got ideas. And uh, I think that's important for a director to have. And just finally, do you harbor ambitions to, to do much behind the scenes? Whether that be kind of producing in the future and doing maybe directing one day? Or well, yeah, I've directed. Um, I've directed a few things. I've got mm -hmm. a short. I've got um, also like a comedy series that I, I did some episodes of. Um, yeah, later on, I want to get this performance bug out of me, you know, first, and then provide a platform for other people to come up as well. You know what I mean? I think cause you got to know when your day is done. It may ne it may never be, mm -hmm. but I'd, I'd also like to to tell stories myself. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Cheers. Thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!